Hello and welcome to part two of the Final Cut Pro uh, training series or tutorials. Um, in this section, we will be covering basic cutting techniques, nesting sequences, speed changes, and freeze frames. Okay. All right, let's get started. Well, in case you uh, hear some weird panting or breathing, my dog is uh, afraid of thunderstorms and right now there's a thunderstorm going on. So if you hear that and you're a little creeped out, that's why. All right, let's get started. There's a bunch of different ways in which you can edit or basically in Final Cut, there's at least two ways to do pretty much anything that you want to do. Um, as far as basic cutting or getting clips into the timeline and this kind of stuff, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, one way is you can just drag your whole entire clip in and then you can move the handles around and that's a pretty slow way of doing it. Um, and although if you really wanted to, I guess you could, you could do that. Um, by the way, this, uh, Apple minus, uh, makes the, whatever window you're in smaller or larger Apple, and Apple plus makes it, uh, or Apple equals really, but the plus keys above it, uh, makes it larger. But if you want to just do the timeline, you can do Apple minus, and that only does the timeline, even if you're clicked up on the canvas or something, because you know, that's option you know, zooming in there, whereas if you did the Apple key and you were selecting the canvas, see, it would zoom in the canvas instead. Okay, so let's set this back. We will fit to window. Okay, so there's one technique. You can just drag it in and trim it up or whatever. Um, another technique, which is the one that I usually use, is you can skim through your clip, you know, kind of, all right, let's say we want to start it. Oh right here you set an endpoint which is i the shortcut key for endpoints pretty much anywhere is i and the shortcut key for outpoints is o so you set an endpoint you kind of skim along all right we'll go up to right before uh she runs that's the same dog that is panting from the thunderstorm by the way all right we'll just we'll just say we go to there and you set an out point okay and usually i just drag it down to where i want it you know you can kind of move it around oh drag it down now this is important you see the arrow with the uh, with it facing down? That means it's going to put it right there. Whereas if we go up a little bit, it's going to move all clips out of the way. I'll show you what I mean in a second. We'll just bring that down. Let's just bring this clip in also. Okay. And another thing that is very important is this key over here. This is a snapping. The shortcut key is N. The shortcut key you should definitely uh, familiarize yourself with because if you want this clip to line up with this clip, uh, you're going to find it's going to be very difficult. But if you hit N, which is snapping, and see that now that uh, indented, it'll snap it right together. Now, of course, this can be very annoying if you want it to be, if you wanted like a one second clip of uh, black in between them. So you hit N again, and you can just kind of skim to that black. All right. Well, let's just turn snapping back on, and we will line it back up. Okay. Like I said before, the arrows when you drag a clip in are important to look at because if it's pointing down that is going to not add any time to the timeline it's going to insert the clip right there it's going to overwrite the time that was already there so if you put it on top of a clip it's going to overwrite you know that little section of the clip or if you put it you know before a clip it's just going to insert or overwrite that little area of um, black but if you were to drag it in and use the arrow that points to the right that's going to uh, insert it and move everything else, shift everything else the length of the clip. See everything moved over? Or if you put it on top of another clip, it's going to actually keep that clip the same length, but put it in, make a cut and put it in between uh, in that cut. So that can be kind of confusing. And you know, if you're dragging clips in and you're not sure, if you don't want to mess up your timeline and things are getting messed up, that could be why. All right, let's just undo that. All right, now we have two clips. Another way to edit is three-point editing. This comes from the original idea when you had to use two different tapes and you had to actually have three in or out points set on some of the tapes so it could actually re-record from one tape to another. To use three-point editing, you use the in and out points in your timeline. So if we made an in point, uh, let's say we made it one minute and one, let's say we made the in point one minute and uh, 10 seconds and seven frames in, and we have our endpoints and outpoints set in our source footage already. Right over here, these are the tools for it. You can do an insert edit, which is F9, 
and that will move everything over a little bit. Or you could do an overwrite edit, which is F10, the shortcut key, and that'll just place it right in that spot. You can also do replace edits, and there's a few different options um, for replace edits. So basically where, where your cursor is here, if we set an endpoint there, and we replace it, now it replaced that first clip with the clip we wanted, okay. And if you have endpoints here, you can always right click and clear in and out, and now your endpoints are gone. So that's a few different ways just to do simple cutting. Um, I prefer just dragging them in and moving them around to where I like them. That's just my own preference. You might be quicker at using the three-point editing system. It's, it's completely up to you. That's what makes Final Cut great is that it can kind of tailor to what you're fastest at and what you like the most. Once you have clips in the timeline, there's two different ways that you can actually cut these clips. You can either use the blade tool, which is a number of different tools, and the shortcut is B. And see now, when you hit B, see when I bring it over a clip, I'll have a little razor. That'll cut it right there, or I can cut it there. That's one way to do it. But now, if you want to drag a clip, you can't do it unless you hit A for the arrow tool. And you have to switch back to the arrow tool in order to drag the clip around. I prefer to use the shortcut to cutting at the playhead, which is basically this line here. You can cut it right there with the shortcut of Control V. Um, and that cuts it right at the playhead and you stay with the arrow tool and it's fine. Or if you want to learn all the short keys to the tools, you can just cut back and forth. So I got the B for the blade tool. I'm going to turn off snapping, which is N. I'm going to cut it there, hit A for the arrow tool again real quick, and there you go. So it really depends on how you want to edit. If you want to learn the shortcut keys for the tools, that's definitely helpful, and the pen tool will be helpful, as I will note in a later tutorial. But those are two different ways to cut a clip once it's on the timeline. So let's say we have this sequence, sequence one, and let's say, well, let's make a new sequence real quick. Sequence three is fine. Open that up in the timeline. We'll just drag this clip in. All right, so let's say you made each scene in your movie or whatever you're editing a sequence. So sequence one, we have one scene, and then in sequence three, we have another scene. This makes it easier to kind of keep track of yourself and you don't have a really long, you know, a really long timeline with everything in it. What you can then do is create another sequence. We'll call it final. And you can actually drag sequence one. So we have scene one in here. There's the whole sequence and you know, our cuts are in there, or they should be. Yes, if we rewind the sequence. There they are, see there's the first clip and there's a second clip and then there's that long third clip. And then you can just drag the next sequence in right after it. So you could edit your whole, you know, you could edit each scene as a sequence and then put your movie together this way and you can, you can still put effects on these, like if you wanted to broadcast safe filter, or you could put transitions on them and that kind of stuff. And then you can even nest this sequence three into another one. So if you wanted to kind of build them up, uh, it can get very complicated, but nesting sequences is very uh, helpful in Final Cut. Next, we will discuss speed changes. So let's go back into sequence one. All right, so we have this clip and we wanna kinda, all right, so let's just trim it up here. We want to slow it down. It's simple to do. You can just right click it and do speed. And you can do variable speed or constant speed. Usually it's easy just, just to do constant speed if you want to slow it down. You can do say 50% and do frame blending which will make it look a little bit nicer. And you hit OK. And now it will play back slower. Now, of course, if you want to really do slow motion, you should bring it into another program like Motion or After Effects because they have a much more advanced frame blending technique where as in some of the motion, as I'll show you, I'll show you in this clip, it'll be easier to see. Let's say we wanted to uh, slow this down and we slowed it down to 25% and you hit OK. And like you see, you can kind of tell, you see it gets kind of blurry in it. It's because it's, it's blending the two frames together. You see that as it moved, it kind of blurred. Whereas motion and After Effects, After Effects have um, different frame blending techniques that'll actually um, make this look a lot nicer. See that looks kind of, you know, it looks, it looks, you know, like you slowed it down in Final Cut. 
Whereas if you did this in Motion or After Effects, it'll look a lot nicer. And the same concept goes for uh, speeding up or reversing a clip. It's pretty simple. You can just reverse it and so you want it at 150%. And we'll keep frame blending on because it does affect too when you speed it up. And oh, there she goes backwards and the whole clip is reversed. Okay, that's simple enough. Um, one, another thing to notice is this green bar up here. You notice when I put it to 50%, um, a green bar appeared over top. This is what is available for playback. If it's green, you're, you usually should be good to play it back and you'll be fine. If it's orange, um, let's say, so for instance, if we, add, well, we'll get that to that when we do effects. But if it turned orange, if this turned orange, then you might be skipping some frames and you play back. And if it turns red, it will not play back unless you render it. You also might want to make sure if you, if, if you click on this RT here, this is real time uh, playback. If it's on safe playback, right, if it's green, you'll be fine. But if that's orange, it'll say unrendered and it won't let you watch anything. So make sure that if you wanted to watch, you know, it's, it's called unlimited RT and it's not, it's not safe as what they say is because you can drop frames or the output might not look the exact same as once it's rendered. When you add a bunch of um, effects to a clip, it, it, need, it often needs to render the effects. It might not give you the best real-time playback, but if you want to just preview it and watch it, you can do unlimited RT. I usually edit an unlimited RT and then I render the entire thing and watch it before. If you want to know for rendering, you can render the selection, which is the hotkey of uh, Command R, and see here we go. We got preview. This is all your um, settings here. So red need, means needs render, and orange will play under unlimited. Um, if you render all, it's Option R, so that'll render your entire timeline, and you can do render only if it only needs to be rendered or if it's unlimited, whatever. So you know you would get this. You could do Option R, and you could get this, which means you did not save your project. So you need to save your project so because the render files also go somewhere. And as talked about in the last tutorial, you need to save your project before you capture it and even before you start editing because it needs to know where to put these um, render files. But we'll cancel that. So that basically that's speeding up a clip and a little bit on rendering too. Now to create a freeze frame, let's say we wanted this freeze frame for some reason and we wanted it just to stick as a freeze frame. It can be kind of confusing to find it. You look around, oh, there's no little camera here to do a, anything. It's right under Modify and Make Freeze Frame. And it brings you up right in the viewer, it brings you a freeze frame of it. And you see even if you move this, it's just a still frame. Uh, you could either just drag this right down to your timeline, but now there's no reference to it up here, which can get confusing. And if you actually delete this and you had clicked on something else, well, now your freeze frame is gone. So what I usually do is we'll do shift N, which was the hotkey. It makes another freeze frame. I drag it into here. Well, maybe we'll put it under graphics. I drag it, um, oh, it didn't go there. I drag it into the project uh, files here and now I have it and then I drag it down because now I have a reference to it no matter what and I know where it is. So now that's the still frame. Okay, well that, that'll do it for this section. Make sure you check out part three of the Final Cut basic tutorials where we will cover audio and video tracks, linking, stereo pairs, and peaking. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out RTN at rtnch5.tv where you can watch live programming, and make sure you check out my site, cinematicdslr.com.